All right, welcome to another episode of the Panther Pad Podcast. I am Mike Payne, General of the Original Black Panthers of VA, National General under King Rick. And today I have a very special guest, a friend, homeboy, a partner, and he is also head of security, Mr. King Ja. Thank you, thank you. Peace and blessings. What's going on, General? Oh, you know, I'm happy to have you here, you know, because, you know, I, I of course, appeared on your show. Yeah. We, 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 we'll, we'll do the shameless plug, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. We'll, 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 let them know, let them know. Go check it out. Right, check it out. Yeah, uh, King's Cup. Yes. Yes, yeah. he has a great podcast called King's Cup, and, and, and it's doing very well. And, uh, you know, I wanted to have him on this show because I believe in uh, telling the story of a lot of the soldiers and how they came up and, and, and their... Um, active participation in our community and also within the organization. So, you know, first of all, I mean, give us some background about yourself. Just, you know, um, just some earlier stuff, you know? I some earlier things about myself. Um, I'm originally from uh, New Jersey. Uh, not many people know that because I've been down here for a while. Um, I'm pretty much described as the protector of my family. You know, I was raised by my mother. So, you know, from there on, that's how it goes. Um, I'm the oldest out of a lot of siblings. <laughs> so, you know how that goes. Um, none of that, you know, I experienced pretty much the same thing that every black male in the society faced, you know, growing up in the hood. Uh, you know, my dad actually uh, fought hard to get us out. He actually bought us a house when we was probably, I turned 15, mm. 16. And um, I think him doing that and giving me a di different atmosphere than what I was used to kind of helped me see different, you know? Mm. So, yeah, that's just a little bit, a little bit about me. You know, um, he actually encouraged me to do music. You know, um, when I wanted to be in the streets, he put DJ turntables in my hands. So okay. that, that was pretty dope for him to uh, switch my narrative of my life or what it could have been. You know? Right. So um, it took me about two years to pick up that DJing thing uh, because I didn't have anybody to teach me. Uh, so self-taught. Right. So I self-taught myself. And then from there, I just kind of took off with it. Right. And see, that's a really uh, a big part and, and a big thing is because, like you said, a lot of other black uh, males have experienced a lot of things that you've experienced. Mm -hmm. And the fact that, you know, when they hear your story and see the different things that you're doing, um, maybe some of them can be inspired to do some of those things as well. So I think it's really cool that we uh, let people always hear, uh, you know, stories that people can relate to. Yeah. And so they don't always look at us as we're some type of, you know, just up here or we're down there, or, you know, or yeah. anything like that, or you're not, here in life yet and so I, I can't be a panther you know because there's certain uh we, we we get all kind of different people that have all kind of different problems we're real people we're real normal people um we just choose to put this organization first and really uh fight for our community um so it, it, even if you're not knowledgeable in a whole or conscious as they call it in, in, in a lot of different um uh black nationalist type aspects guess what you know if you're ready to fight for your people, you're ready to fight for your people. Absolutely. And we can learn a lot um, on the way. So, you know, it, it's good to be able to uh, see the progression, progression in, um, in, in the growth in everybody. Right. Definitely. But um, so with being a Panther, what first made you want to join the original Black Panthers? Oh, man. Initially, uh, what made me, I had a, I had a moment. Um, I got pulled over in uh, Portsmouth, mm. and um, I never really had a good rapport with Portsmouth Pol Police Department, um, just to throw that out there. And when I got pulled over, I was on the way to make my car payment that day. However, um, the type of car I drive, it's a few of them in, the, in that area that are known for, you know, drug trafficking, whatever the case may be. And I just happened to fit that description on that day. However, my rights were definitely violated on that day because when they pulled me over, they did not ask me, you know, where I was going. You know, if I had anything in the car, they straight took me out the car, slammed me on the hood of my car. Mm -hmm. So from there, you know, a lady came out from the dealership and she actually was trying to record the incident, which caused the cop to actually leave the scene and leave. From there, I reached out to a good friend of mine, David. Uh, shout out to David, man. I think I just did some things with him with the books this past week. Right, so. right. Um, I reached out to him and told him pretty much my story and he led me straight to you. Wow. Yeah. 
And that's crazy because we frequent the same masjid. So, yeah. uh, you know, it's like it's a small world, you know, and, and it, it, it's really a small world with community activists. You know, mm -hmm. um, you know, everybody kind of knows who's you know out there doing work and really putting in, you know, different work for the uh, for the community. So we it's not hard to get a hold of us when you want to get a hold of a right. certain no. certain uh, organization or whatever. But, yeah, I, I, I'm glad that, you know, he, he definitely put that bug in your ear and uh, you came through. Um, because you've definitely been thriving and, and doing doing well here. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I love it. I love yeah. it. I love <laughs> right. it. So, you know, and that's the thing uh, with being a Black Panther. Now, you, you could have done any type of, uh, you know, any type of community work. But specifically, to ask that same question, but mm -hmm. what made you want to do this type of you know, uh, community work because you know you you you're involved with a lot of people. You know, you could have did different uh, fundraisers. You could have been out doing whatever you wanted to do. Right, right. But um, that was still positive. But this is a particular type of work. Yes, it, it, it's not something that just any and everybody can do. Right. So, what 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 made you do that? Um, I think I've always been on the search to find my purpose. You know, and I knew my purpose had something to do with the African American community. It has something to do with kings, and you know raising them to be better. I joined motorcycle clubs, you know, mm -hmm. I tried to do my own thing as far as, you know, going out there, gritting a group of people to come together and do things for the community. And it still felt like it was a void up until I got with the original Black Panthers. And, you know, that's just the first lane that somebody threw in my direction to say, yo, check them out. You know, I wasn't really on the Black Lives Matter tip because I didn't really agree with all the things that were going on at that moment. You know, so when I did my research on the Black Panthers and seeing the lineage and where it came from, I was like, that's dope. Like, I would definitely love to be a part of that, you know? So that's what took it there for me, you know? To leave something behind, behind for my kids and to show them, like, hey, this thing is still living out here. You know, it's not right. like what they told us. It's not dead. They're not, you know, buried off or all locked up. They're right here, yeah. you know? So I just wanted to do my part and um, show my kids that, you know, being Black is great. You know? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, and that, that's one thing we always talk to the kids about and even some of the adults, you yeah. know, you got, you got to let them know because, man, at this day and time, you know, you you see some people and you wonder, you know, like you don't know if they know it or not, but, you know, <laughs> being black is, is, is dope. You never yeah, apologize for being dope. Although we have our trials and tribulations, yeah. uh, it's a beautiful thing. Right. So my next question to you is your first experience with the Panthers. What was that like? Because we hear different stories. You know, some people have, you know, different different things, you know, depending on the mission. But what, what, what was your first experience? Oh, like? man, my first experience with the Panthers. I think it was, well, we had a few, but the first, I guess, being out there dealing with the uh, up front in front of the blind battle, whatever you want to call it, was cleaning off the bridge. Um, mm. That was that was real. That's when it really opened my eyes and showed me, like, you know, this is real, you know. It's people out here that want to hurt you for what you do, you know, mm. um, and it's really like I think a lot of people take it for granted that some of us may not make it home. You know, we really do stuff or we really go out there and defend y'all to the point where it can cost us our lives, you know, and that was my first experience, you know, mm. at the bridge, you know, we cleaned off a few trucks wanted to run us over and. I made my stance at that point to say, you know, it's either now or never. And I took a stance that day and I made sure that from that day forward, I was going to be the best Panther that I could possibly be. And that, and that that's a really crazy thing. That was a crazy day. That was like, a crazy that, day. That whole day was crazy. But, you know, um, people, I try to get it across to people, but I don't want them to always just hear those things from me. Mm -hmm. um, they don't realize, you know, we, yeah, we go out and we take, shit swear jar we take shit all the time swear jar again right two times um from even our own people yep. people that want to uh raid the races the oppressors you know we take stuff from everybody um sometimes they don't agree with our decisions whether we uh decide to help them with something or we don't mm -hmm. um sometimes we don't think that that's something we should be involved with uh sometimes it's something we can't do anything about right you know uh Whatever it is, but normally we're out there to help and we're out there to do what we can. Yeah. And um, some people's requests are just out of this world anyway. So it's just like, yeah, that is just something we're, we're not you know, superheroes. We're not doing, right. We're <laughs> not superheroes. We've, we've heard some really crazy things. And it was like, nah, you know, after that, we'll definitely all be in prison. <laughs> <You know what laughs> so we can't go that route. But um, 
you know, we, we take it from all angles as far as how people uh, perceive us. Uh, like I said, even our own people. But we're out here still, no matter what, uh, defending our black people, our black nation. And uh, we're putting our lives at risk um, all the time while, excuse me, while doing that. So I think that's something I, uh, that, that that's a good story that, that people do need to hear and uh, they do need to uh, recognize. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, this, this man right here, he protects me all the time. You know, he holds me down. Yeah. Um, you know, there's there's many people that that, that want to see, see see your boy here fall. You know, they want to they want to see the general hurt. And, um, you know, we just can't have it. And all I can tell you is if you try to touch him, you probably won't even see it coming. You won't see it coming. I'm telling you, uh, we, <laughs> we we stay pretty tight, you know, and um, I just like to uh, get the work done. Our people need us and, uh, you know, we don't take threats lightly. So we have to uh, be on point at all times. And, you know, he does a good job of that and keeping uh, keep keeping our, our crew on point. So also now oh. juggling being a Panther and just your family or personal life, you know, how do you do that because a lot of people have problems mm -hmm. with juggling you know uh their, their their regular life and you know the panther life and they always ask you know they because I, I get it a lot like people right. say you know i don't have time for that i don't you know this that and the third mm -hmm. so help the people understand that a little bit um i think it's all about balance and i think um it goes back to your significant other you know shout out to mine because she definitely supports me and she believes in the movement that i do so Anytime that that hotline goes off or she knows or they got to go out of town, they got to do this. She knows there's a purpose behind it. We're raising three boys, mm -hmm. you know, and black boys at that, you know, so we got to stand strong for them. Uh, she stays home with them. So I really thank her for that. You know, she gives me the availability and the time to be out there, you know. Right. So uh, that's pretty much how I, how I get to juggle. You know, every Saturday I'm always out there, you know, foot to the pavement and when Sundays I go home with my kids and I sit there and I spend the time with them, spend the day with them, take them out. And I don't sugarcoat anything from them. I tell them everything that I go through and everything that I do within reason. Right. So, yeah. yeah and, and, you know, just, a, you know, we, we are, we are in the community a lot. Mm -hmm. Okay. Especially with stuff I have going on. He always has to be there. Um, you know, there's work involved. There's, there's different things. So, you know, regardless of what life will always happen, mm -hmm. but, you should always be there for your community and be there for the village. So, uh, yeah, I just want to wrap that up. And, you know, I thank you for coming through. Um, of course, you're going to stay here and join us for, for the next sec next uh, segment we're going to go, go to. But, um, yeah, thank you. And I appreciate it. Always. On to the next segment. All right. <clears throat> so this segment, I don't know, may be touchy for a few people. I don't know. I, I don't feel like I'm going to pull any punches, but I want to speak to our black men. Um, and specifically, I want to speak to the black men that aren't standing up, that aren't holding things down, that aren't helping out the village. So what I've been seen just with a lot of the different community work uh, mm -hmm. with the different organizations, not just ours, but a lot of the different organizations. And I talked to a lot of people. Um, the Queens are phenomenal. Yes. They're stepping up like, you know, you have Queens and all organizations stepping up, handling business, <laughs> uh, doing yeah. all the things that, that, that some of the men should do. Definitely. You know, uh, I don't know what's going on with our brothers uh, these days. And I'm not saying that you have to be a Panther or you have to do the type of work we do, but I'm saying you should be doing something. Mm -hmm. You know, we have a mentality of, uh, I got mine, you better get yours. Mm -hmm. So, or, or, or you get a certain amount of money and you feel these are poor people problems or mm -hmm. these are problems I don't have to deal with because I, you know, I'm, I'm kind of set. You know, you're busy doing all your little buying your personal stuff or whatever. Mm -hmm. There's a, we, we have to pull each other up as a community, but as a race, um, as a nation. 
And I hear all different kind of excuses from grown men of, you know, because some of them will hit me up and say they want to join and different things like that. And then all of a sudden they get these cold feet or, you know, maybe their parents might tell them, you know, that's not the thing to do. Or, you know, maybe their girl get at them and say that's not the thing to do. Um, We've had people, you know, their relationships end because of the organization, because of the fact that they, you know, want to go so hard. Mm-hmm. with the organization because they, they they know what it takes to help our black people mm-hmm. and if you were with a significant other that just you know uh doesn't rock with it like that it, it kind of starts to uh you have an issue at home right you have you, you have, have a battle issue. a war going on at home and um you can't fight two wars at the same time <laughs> yeah yeah you need your peace you know and you know, it, when you got somebody that has your back you know a good queen she's gonna um she's gonna be your peace definitely and uh that's something that, you know, you know, I believe in. But as far as the men go, uh, we need you. You know, we need you out here. Uh, not just the Panthers, but just in in the community. Uh, whether you're mentoring somebody uh, or whatever. If you just ain't out here doing nothing and you, you know, living the life of the rap songs and <laughs> hitting the clubs and, mm-hmm. and bagging chicks and whatever, and you out here doing whatever you're doing, look. We need men to stand up. We do not need docile men. We do not need weak men. We need strong men. Our women are out here trying to fight the fight for us. Our women are out here holding down lines, front lines uh, in the battlefield. You know, we got women out here that that, that are strong enough that, that they, they beating some of the men. Absolutely. <laughs> you, you, you understand what I'm saying? Like, I don't know what's going on. Like, I, I, I don't get it. Um, just as a strong king, you know, I don't understand how you can't understand that you need to help the children to come, the queens of the village. And how do you don't, as a black person, think about the village? These are things that are very important. And if you have a son or a daughter, then you're going to want someone, uh, substantial and, and, and with the same mindset to marry your son or daughter Mm -hmm. uh you know that that's not going to be there if we're left with nothing but ignorance right you know there's 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 things that need to be taught um i need you to step up you know i need our men to step up uh and i'm not saying you got to follow me but follow somebody who um is doing that work or create some work of your own and 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 do it and, and put forth the effort just join the fight. That's all we're saying. Regardless of what, I'm not saying you got to follow anybody or whatever. Join the fight. Get in the fight. Don't keep sitting in the bleachers or even outside the whole stadium. Get in the game. And, uh, you know, I, I guess we can leave it at that. No, I'm going to just say, most importantly, if you're mm-hmm. not helping your community, you're definitely hurting. It. That is true. Yeah, be be part of the uh, solution, not the problem. I feel like we take a lot of stances as men for certain things. You know, I've seen it in the streets. If a man calls you a certain word or out your name, you quick to defend yourself. Right. So from there, we just got to put that same energy into our community, into our black people, and not wait till it becomes our child or till the ball is dropped in our backyard to want to say something about it. We got to stand up before that happens. Absolutely. And it's up to us. And if our women can do it, we can do it. Yeah. And to, and to all the guys that's, that's quick to bang on another black man for disrespecting them, uh, you know, doing whatever to their to family member, you know, we need to go at anybody and everybody else that does that to our our our, our, uh, our, our race as a, right. uh, as a whole. You know, you know, the police come out here in your community and, and, and illegally shoot one of your people or shoot one of your, 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 your um, relatives and... and you know, you quick to bang on somebody else that'll do it. Mm-hmm. Well, then what? So just think about that. Um, we need to stand up as men. We are kings. We have queens, and we are soldiers. So we gotta continue to stand up, and that's all I'm gonna say about that. Get in the fight. All right, and uh, that's it. Like. Subscribe, share, follow. Friday, 7 p.m. All right, we'll be right here. And uh, I appreciate you. All power to the people. All power to the people.